Hi everyone, thanks for coming back for part two. In this part I just want to go over Deuteronomy 31 and I just want to show you how I believe this all has to do with the Jubilee cycles and how this seems to be based on a 50 year Jubilee cycle and how this all relates to the, the year of release or the year of Jubilee which like I had said in my previous video I believe that the true year of release is the year 5777 and how this relates to the Feast of Tabernacles and with Simchat Torah and most importantly how it all relates with the, the rapture. So I wanted to try to explain that in this video and I'm just going to start by reading the scripture and I'll just go over it as I go along and it says, And Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel and he said unto them, I am a hundred and twenty years old this day. And I believe this right here is making a direct reference to the Jubilees because there are exactly 120 Jubilees that make up the 6,000 years from the day of creation until the day of the Lord and the beginning of the millennium or the thousand year reign of Christ, which is... Um, a parallel to the six days of creation and then the Sabbath which was the, the day of rest so you have a thousand years of rest after the six thousand years are completed so I believe this is a reference to the six thousand years or the 120 Jubilees and so it goes on to say I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord hath said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord hath said. And as we know, Joshua is a type of Christ in the Old Testament. This is actually the name Yeshua in the Hebrew. It's the same name as uh, the name of Jesus. There's different ways to pronounce it. It could be pronounced Yehoshua or, or Yahshua. There's different ways to say it, but it's the same name. And Joshua is a type of Christ in the Old Testament. And over here it's talking about destroying the nations and I believe this is um, a direct parallel to when the nations go against Israel and Jesus will come and fight against those nations in the end times as is talked about in Ezekiel 38 and 39 as well as Joel 2 and 3 as well as the book of Zechariah in um, chapters 12 through 14 and as well as the book of Revelation, the, the battle of Armageddon. I believe these are all talking about the same thing, about all the nations coming against Israel. And then the Lord is going to fight for Israel. And so it goes on to say, And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sihon and to Og, kings of the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong and of a good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua, and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and unto all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles. So I believe this is talking about the Shemitah year. At the end of every seven years would be the Shemitah year. 
in the solemnity of the year of release. This will be talking about the Jubilee year and in the Feast of Tabernacles. And this is when all Israel is to come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. Thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. And I believe all Israel is referring to both spiritual and natural Israel. I believe it's referring to the Jews and the Gentiles that all are to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose and thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing and I believe this is a reference to Simchat Torah and then it goes on to say gather the people together men and women and children and thy stranger which again this I believe this is referring to the Gentiles as well as the Jews that is within thy gates that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law. So I believe this is a direct reference to the rapture. We're just talking about gather the people together. And I believe this is also what is talked about in, in Joel 2. Where it says in verse 15, it says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. And as we know, this is referring to the rapture is referring to the return of the bridegroom and the word closet over here is the word hupa as you can see here which is the word in the Hebrew for the bridal chamber it is the the canopy where Hebrew weddings take place and the it looks very similar to a uh, sukkah which is um, what the the Jews are, were supposed to dwell in or are supposed to dwell in during the Feast of Tabernacles. And so I'll just read this again. It says, Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, and that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law, and that their children, which have not known anything, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, as long as ye live in the land, whither ye go over the Jordan to possess it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach, that thou must die. And so, of course, this would be the end of the 120 years. And if you convert it to Jubilees, it would be the end of the 120 Jubilees, or the end of the 6,000 years. And then it goes on to say, Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation, that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud. And the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. So you have a lot of references here to the tabernacle. And of course, this is all in reference to the Feast of Tabernacles. And then it goes on to say, And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. So this will be the end of the 120 years or the 120 jubilees. And this people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. And this sounds a lot like the apostasy or the falling away that takes place that's talked about in 2 Thessalonians 2 where it says let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed 
the son of perdition. And the word falling away is a word apostasia in the Greek, which means a, a defection. Uh, I've also seen it um, defined as a rebellion. Okay, so I'll just read this again. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? So, of course, this sounds like the wrath of God being poured out during the tribulation. And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they have wrought, in that they are turned unto other gods. Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach it the children of Israel, put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land, which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves, and waxen and fat, then will they turn unto other gods, and serve them, and provoke me, and break my covenant. And it shall come to pass, when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten out of their mouths of their seed, for I know their imagination, which they go about even now, before I have brought them into the land which I swear. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day, and taught it the children of Israel, and he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge, and said, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. And it came to pass, when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book, until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law, and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against your Lord, and how much more after my death. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death you will utterly corrupt yourselves, and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days, because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. So this is making a direct reference here to the latter days. So it's pretty clear here that this is all related to the latter days and that, that it's prophetic for the end times. And so the point that I wanted to make in this video is that I just wanted to show how I believe this all relates to the to the Jubilees and to a 50-year Jubilee cycle, as well as to the Feast of Tabernacles, and most importantly, how I believe it relates to the, the Rapture. And what I want to talk about in the next video is I want to give some more information on why I believe this is all based on a 50-year Jubilee cycle. I want to give you some more evidence for that, but I'll have to do that in the next video. Thank you.